Okay, so let's go through some of the animations that we have with chapter three. Okay, so here it just kind of goes into um, just phase refers to the quantity of matter that is homogeneous throughout in both chemical composition and physical structure. And so basically all it's saying is that the phase is the state at which the chemical composition is existing the same, right? So a solid, a liquid phase, a vapor or a gas phase. And so then it just goes into more information about each one of those. And when you talk about a pure substance, remember we just covered that a pure substance is a substance that is uniform and invariable in chemical composition. A pure substance can exist in more than one phase, but its chemical composition must be the same at each phase. So in a two-phase system, the liquid water H2O and ice H2O is an example of a pure substance since both have the exa exact chemical composition H2O. So when you think of things like alloys, um, like maybe steel or something like that, when it's a solid and then you heat it up and you melt or you make the steel malleable, that does actually change the chemical composition of it. So that is not a pure substance, but water where it's H2O is the same regardless of the state or the, the phase that it's in, whether it be liquid or solid. A uniform mixture of gases such as air also can be considered as a pure substance provided that the mixture remains a gas and does not react chemically. So this one is also a little bit of a caveat, right? So it, it the gas can be a pure substance, but it needs to be on its own and isolated from anything else to ensure that it does not react or mix with something else to chemically change the compound because you can't just keep gas in a cup, right? It's, it's not like you, like you can just hold water, you know, hold liquid water or um, a solid water. It's gas, so you have to enclose it and ensure that it is staying just to itself. Okay, and then let's look at the next ones are going to be liquid to vapor and vapor to liquid, and then we're going to end it at ideal gas. So this talks about at a pressure of 1.014 bar and then a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. So remember we went over the PVT diagram. And so we have T on this Y axis and specific volume, of course, on the X axis. So, so this line right here is going to be the pressure. Okay. And this is going to show you what happens when the piston, when it counteracts with the liquid water and how that represents on the PVT diagram. Okay, so you see some heat going up, and of course we're increasing that heat, right? So we've gotten to the heat, and now we're gonna get into the uh, phase change. Okay, so still, now we're in that, let me stop this, right here, you see how we are, gosh, maybe 55 to 60% of the way under this dome, and remember everything under this curve is a two-phase mixture, that means that we have both liquid and water vapor here. Remember, because we are in two phases before we just had liquid, all the way up until we got on that liquid line. And then when we started going over, maintaining at the same 100 degrees Celsius, now we are into the two-phase mixture. And we are gonna stay in that two-phase mixture See, we're decreasing, we're decreasing that quality. Now that quality is 100% vapor. We are on the vapor line, right? 
Okay. Increasing in temperature because we can have superheated vapor. As a matter of fact, we are in that side, right? Okay. I'll restart it and I won't say anything <laughs> through it so you can just observe. Okay, so this one right here was for a pressure of 1.014 bar. Now let's look at it at 10 megapascals. Okay, so again, increasing. Of course, we've got a lot more pressure. So we're gonna go higher up on that line, but we're still in the liquid state. We're still in that liquid state. And then when we go across, at a given temperature, you're going to see that quality, that two-phase mixture. See, so we're starting to go in. We're slowly losing that liquid. And now everything is vapor because we are on that vapor line. And then still increasing into the superheated vapor region. And I will restart it and play it again. So let's go into vapor to liquid. So we went liquid to vapor. Let's do some cooling. Let's do some liquid, uh, some vapor to liquid. Okay, so you see we are all starting at vapor. This is at a pressure of 1.014 bar. And then we're gonna do the same thing again at 10 megapascals. You see we're starting over here in the superheated vapor region. We are cooling down. We've got some compression going. All right, and so now we've made it to the vapor. We're gonna see this two-phase mixture and we're gonna see the quality. The quality is decreasing because the amount of vapor is decreasing. When we get to this line, our quality will be 0% vapor. See, just like that. And now we cool down again. To the compressed liquid, right? Okay. And so now let's look at this from a pressure standpoint, from a higher pressure standpoint. We're going to start way up on this chart. And I believe we have some for ideal gas. So let's look at that. Okay, so these were looking at the Z tables. Remember, these were the ones that I said are really hard to see. And so we had this excerpt in, in the chart, but this is something good to just go back and review, especially if you're wanting to know, you know, making sure that uh, V is specific volume the R is the gas constant, things like that. And then R bar, that's how I'll, what I will refer to this as, is the universal gas constant. Um, the M is the molecular mole weight. And then we've got limits. And so generalized compressibility chart. So I will sometimes call them the compressib compressibility chart or the Z chart, I'll use those interchangeably provides the PVT data for all industrial important gases over extremely wide ranges of temperatures. Okay, and 
uh, just to note the compressibility factor of Z is plotted versus a dimensionless reduced pressure and reduced temperature. And then here's the gas model. And I'll play it. Okay, so you see as the reduced pressure becomes very low, Z approaches 1. So nothing too outlandish um, based upon what we've kind of already talked about, but it just goes to show along the lines that as reduced pressure becomes very low, Z approaches one. That's basically um, it along with the formulas, and I know we went over, of course this is the equation of state, PV equals RT, but then also we have the alternative form of the ideal gas equation of state, our PV equals MRT, which you'll see this a lot because it's going to include the mass. Okay, I hope that this was helpful.